1992, C. Peter Wagner published a book called Territorial Spirits. This book claims that there are unseen demonic powers that control governments and territories throughout the world. Wagner's followers claim that Adam in the garden gave Satan and all his dominions, primarily Satan, the keys to rule the earth when he partook of the fruit. After the fall, Satan set up demon rulers to control the affairs of men and women. So there is a hierarchy of demons throughout the world. When Jesus died, according to the followers of C. Peter Wagner, before he raised from the dead, he went into hell itself and took the keys back from Satan. And since then, Satan and his demons try to keep as much territory as possible over people and over governments. Wagner wrote that for us to preach the gospel, we need to fight against these powers, these demonic powers, through fasting, through prayer, and through faith-filled commands. And these are just some of the weapons that are used to clear territory for the gospel to spread. Now, since this book was written, there have been many revelations given to people, supposedly from God, with names of spirits and the types of spirits that control cities, countries, and all types of geographical, cultural, and political territory. One of his followers, Anna Mendez, claims that she climbed Mount Everest, where God revealed to her that Satan's throne was situated, controlling all the false religions of the world. On top of the world, Anna battled with the queen of the heavens. Although she claims that she has reached the top, video evidence shows that she and her team never really got to the top. Another powerful demonic presence comes from the Aqua Kingdom, which is underwater and is a realm of demons controlled by super demons who send out their workers throughout the world to deceive those who live near bodies of water. We come against the marine kingdom. We come against the animal kingdom. Any, uh, the woman that rides upon the waters, we break the power in the name of Jesus. And we declare that any strange winds, any strange winds that have been sent to hurt the church, sent against this nation, sent against our president, sent against myself, sent against others, we break it by the superior blood of Jesus right now. I find three areas of influence for C. Peter Wagner. First of all, he is and was rather a missions professor at Fuller Seminary. Most of his students were missionaries from or to other countries, countries that practiced or were influenced tremendously by animism. For animism is the oldest religion in the world, scattered throughout the world. In any type of religion, major religion, you're going to find forms of animism seeping in. Being the oldest religion, it claims that spirits inhabit all forms of objects and human works. Secondly, C. Peter Wagner uses scripture to support his ideas. He turns to Daniel chapter 10, where the angel Michael fought with the prince of Persia. Wagner saw this as proof there were spiritual angels and demons over territories, over political, 
over country territories. He also looked to the writings of the New Testament from the Apostle Paul, who briefly mentioned warfare against principalities and powers. Bible verses are oftentimes poorly understood because of cultural and time differences. And when this happens, they can easily be used to support pretty much anything you wanted to say. Although C. Peter Wagner oftentimes uses scripture very properly and in context, unfortunately here he does not. For even though he does use scripture, at the heart of it, territorial spirits is written from an animistic point of view and not necessarily a scriptural point of view. For a more careful study of the principalities and powers found in Paul and throughout the Bible, a more scriptural point of view comes from the third area that I believe that C. Peter Wagner was influenced. It comes from a book called Christ and the Powers. It was written by a Dutch Reformed theologian in 1952 and translated into English nine years later. It was a popular book at Fuller Seminary when I was there in the late 70s and early 80s. And so I assume that he too had been reading the book and knew about it. Berkhoff wondered how it was possible that good people could be carried away the way they did by supporting Hitler. How they could believe that they were a master race above the rest of the world. And how they could so easily turn viciously against others. He lived through the years leading up to Hitler's rule, as well as Hitler's time. He sensed something was in the air, as many did. Something bigger than the sum of all its parts. As a theology teacher, he looked to the Bible, and he studied Paul's use of the words principalities and powers. And his book is one of the best, if not the best, summary of Paul's teachings on the subject of principalities and powers. First of all, Paul listed principalities and powers with very earthly creations, such as life and death, the present and the future, height and depth. In a nutshell, everything created. Secondly, these elemental powers are important in that they hold the world and the world's governments together and helping to form new ones. In this way, their job is to keep us from total chaos, and their job is always necessary. Thirdly, Paul claimed that God created these powers, but in some way they fell. Nevertheless, they will be reconciled to Christ in the end. Fourthly, Paul never talked about who or what the principalities and powers were. He never talked about their nature. He only talked about how they influence human behavior. Many of the Jews in Paul's day believed that God had created watchers to rule over the world. And those watchers fell because they lusted after human women. As the story goes, the watchers had sex with the daughters of men, resulting in giants taking over much of the world before God sent a deluge of water to destroy the earth. But Paul didn't get into this, and he didn't talk about any other explanation of those elemental powers or what they were. Instead, he focused on their influence, just like present and future have an influence on us. I can only guess that because he traveled to so many different cultures who held different legends of the gods and spiritual powers, that this way he could easily transfer one to the other and focus not on what type of power there is out there or what their names are, but rather on the influences on human nature and human behavior. No doubt 
Hendrikus Burkhoff tried to keep as much of the animist thinking out of his study, whereby C. Peter Wagner turns that completely around and uses animism tremendously. Another big difference between the two is that Wagner and his followers downplay how the churches are likewise led by and influenced by such powers. The book of Revelation is addressed not to the churches, but to the angels of seven different churches. Finally, the angels of the churches are not as godly as we would assume angels to be. Six of the seven churches have issues. One of those churches is completely a mess. I should say one of the angels of the churches addressed. In my next section, part two, I will talk about Christian fundamentalism in the United States, the Christian fundamentalism that predated and gave birth to evangelicalism, the evangelicalism of today. How did they respond to Hitler? What did they think before World War II? What I found surprised me. I think it'll surprise you.